When we're on to the U.S. Open, uh, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm amped, I'm pumped. Uh, I'll be chirping at you boys from, from the ground there, definitely. So uh, what, you got on, what you got on deck for me? It's always a blast coming on with the basic bogeys. Yeah, so, well, Gary's got a, another bold <laughs> pick for you. I'll let him start with that because I'm, I'm curious to know your reaction. But he's yeah. got some I mean, he's trying to back it up. Yeah, I mean, listen, we've done this twice now. We did it for the Masters. We did it for the uh, the championship. My homo pick, he finished top five. Victor Hovland got Bud Copeland just amazingly riled up. Finished third. You know, was one was one putt off from a three way playoff. Like I was hyped. You know, but we won't talk about it. But I'm gonna say, my I got a bold pick for you. This is not. I don't feel confident behind it, but I do at the same time. I'm going to go John Rahm. I think he's going to turn it on. I think he's due, and he's just it, it, it's just it's got to happen. It has to happen. I'm going to address the Hovland pick real quick because <laughs> until <laughs> he even admitted that until about a week before the PGA, he was about to pull out. He he said I wasn't I wasn't gonna play because of that's how poor I was playing. I called him. I told him you can't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He got on. He got on with Gary, straightened him out. No, he went back to his old coach, and uh, you know things clicked. And so I, I say that because John Rom and all these live golfers, they're 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 black boxes now. We we have no idea what's going mm-hmm. on in their world, unless you follow Bryson on social media, which Bryson reminds me of the the relative that you're excited to see at the family barbecue every year. And then after about eight hours of the same shtick, you're like, good to see you, Jerry. So, yep. We'll, we're going to be at Grand, We're going to be at grandma's for the fourth. You know, that's Bryson. It was great to see him at the PGA, but now he's doing photo shoots where he's dressing up like Harry Varden and playing. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit much. He's jumped the shark playing with old clubs and yeah. right. Which is kind of cool, but not, it's not entertaining on social media says the guy with the throngs of fans. But the point I'm getting at is John Rom could be geared up. He could be primed. Mm-hmm. And when you're a major winner and you're still in your prime and, uh, you know, at any given moment you can catch lightning in a bottle. I don't think this is that moment for him. I think it is a bold pick, very bold. But here's Wasn't the, the same moment for Hovland either. It, 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 I, dude, that's why I'm sitting here very tiptoeing around it. Um, I don't, Rob I don't necessarily – <laughs> Here's the thing, though. At Pinehurst, at Pinehurst, if uh, if if Rombo rolls it, putting's that kind of thing. It's binary. You're either right. putting it or you're not. I mean, you're either 41 putts or you know you're 20, 28, 27, and kind of getting in contention. If Rom's rolling it, yeah, he's going to be in contention. But if he's not, Pinehurst number two is known for one thing and one thing only: domed greens. These turtle back mm-hmm. greens, and they're going to be fast. It's going to be hot. It's going to be dry. Uh, we're gonna see. We're gonna see maybe you know some real ugly, ugly scenes on the greens. So if he's rolling it, yay. If not, I think it's gonna be another O2 barbecue for John Rahm, and he's gonna go have to do some real, real. If he yeah. misses back-to-back cuts after taking the bag on the premise of I am king shit of the golf world, literally, this is gonna look. This is gonna look like when. I, what the hell is the name of the guy who's playing in Saudi Arabia in soccer? Ronaldo? Is he the one who took yeah, Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Messi took a little bit of equity and came over <clears> to the <throat> States and humbly said, like, I don't care if it is the white devil. I'm going to come play and, you know, where the freedom rings. Nobody's seen Ronaldo in months. And I think we're seeing that with John Rahm and DJ and some of these guys where Bryson's, cont- Bryson's contending, Brooks is contending. Outside of that, it's sporadic at best. Uh, right. So I like I, I do like your pick because part of me wants to see him come back a little bit. I like John Rom, but the other part that's exactly see- why I want I just want to see him back because I want Scotty's just playing on a different level, right? Like yeah, he's, he's just true. out of this world. When John Rom left, when he was the number one player in the world, that's why it was such a big thing in the thing going on. I want to see him get back to that, but like you said, it's we we don't have that accessibility kind of or know like what his game is really at um but yeah uh, that was the one that was sticking out i i i like it i I say that and then the the better devil in me says no i want to see him fucking burn i want to see him crash (laughs) i i want to 
because my biggest curiosity is, and some of the players have done it. There have been some guys who did their tour at Live, and they're back on the DP World Tour, and they're playing. I'm not talking about the guys who are doing the, the double duty. I'm legit talking about folks who are like, all right, that was one and done or two and done, and now I'm back. I want to see what does it look like when, you know, you <laughs> – when somebody is struggling with half a billion dollars or my happiness, like that's the kind of entertainment right. I'm in here for, because these guys are all good at golf. And I love what you said, Scotty is playing on a different level until Xander found the cheat code. Right. All these guys need is confidence. And Xander just found his confidence. He won. He finally yeah. closed. Uh, you mm-hmm. got Ludwig a bear or O bear. Who's coming up. He missed the cut at the PGA, but he's next on the list of who's going to win a major. Your boy, Victor Hovland, he he, mm-hmm. he found it, and he's the defending champ at the Memorial. God knows what happened. Out of for, sorry, I forgot when, whenever this is being aired. But after yeah. winning at the Memorial, and then you know he do, he shows out the way he did at the PGA Championship. Uh, the thing that people have to remember about the U.S. Open is it is open. I mean, we could have Joe Shit the Ragman come down there. That's why Ten Cup was a beautiful movie, and that's why the longest day in golf is one of the best things in golf. You have six hundred forty-five mm-hmm. guys, ten locations. All day, literally, I fell asleep on the couch that day watching the West Coast, you know, wrap up. And these guys, you know, they've got tears in their eyes. You know, Adam Scott, you know, dunks a birdie to keep his streak going all alive. And then all of a sudden, a kid who grew up looking up to him, Cam Davis, birdies right on top of him, says, sorry, Pops, your time's over. I mean, the U.S. Yeah, Open is, is the end-all, be-all of majors for me. I think the PGA has the strongest field. We talked about it where... You can't do, you can't argue against a hundred of the top players in the world minimum, and that's the strongest field. The Masters might have the most prestige and gravitas because who wouldn't want a standing invitation to Augusta National for the rest of their lives? But the right. U.S. Open, and I think the the folks across the pond feel the same way about the Open Championship. It's your it's your it's your national championship, and the USGA has done a hell of a job rejiggering the way they do qualifying and the way they promote it over the last 10 or 15 years to make it into this massive event. I mean, the golf's longest day is now up there with the NFL combine or, uh, you know, the NBA draft lottery as those off field events that if you're the real sicko, you're already paying attention to, but because of social media, because of, you know, 24 seven cable, you know, coverage, there's a little more accessibility to it. The, and that's why I think, you know, the USGA before the US Open said, We're gonna we're gonna look at live and do they need do they need an exemption? Do they need some spots? Are they there yet? I think they might be. And if they do, it's gonna be one or two, but uh it it it's gonna be that's gonna be the market distinction because it, right now those live guys had to go through the ringer, uh, unless you're Taylor Gooch, which Oh, so never mind. I'm not gonna go down that <laughs> rabbit hole today. We're not hating on Taylor Gooch today. But the point being, the the U.S. Open, this is it. I do think that John Rahm, uh, when you get to that level, I mean, we saw it with Scotty Scheffler. He got arrested, and all it took was Ted Scott saying, hey, it's go time. Who knows? Maybe John Rahm gets there. He sees some of his old buddies, and then his caddy looks at him and goes, yeah, remember? You won this fucking thing two years ago. Let's go. So, Gary, here's mm-hmm. to you. I, 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 I'm, I'm not going to follow your pick, but I respect it. No, it's fine. I think that, so we also have sleeper picks, but I want to get through everybody's pick here too. And we have a yeah. sleeper pick to, to finish top 25. That we'll okay. do that. But I definitely want you, I'm interested to see what you think of, uh, Mr. TJ's pick here as well. Yeah. So I am, I am also rolling with a former winner. Um, I think they just, they've got what it takes to kind of win down there at Pinehurst. So I'm going to roll with Matt Fitzpatrick. I think he's can uh he's got the tools he needs to uh to just play well down there. I don't know, I you know. I don't I don't really have too many other insights into it, but I I'm feeling good about Fitzy rolling into to this week. I think what I think what Bud said though is is very I think it's similar with Rom. I mean, it, it, you can say you can make this argument for everybody, but Fitzy's another one if he's if he's rolling it, like that's that's a good course for him. If he's if he's going to start making putts, then I mean, he he can get hot fast. No, it, it, you're right. 
it, you could say it about everyone, but it's only true about certain players. And you can point to guys like Matt, Matt Fitzpatrick when he won, who won the U.S. Open, obviously. But then when he came out the gates at the Ryder Cup on one of those mornings and he birdied like six in a row, yeah, him and nice. Rory, and it was just all. So he is the kind of guy he's streaky like that, and it takes that kind of stupid level of confidence to win, which is why I do like your Matt Fitzpatrick because he is a – don't underestimate brace face, right? The braces came mm-hmm. off and yeah. the confidence went through the roof. <laughs> And, uh, you know, he won the U.S. Open. Then he won Harbor Town, staring down Jordan Spieth. Then he goes into the Ryder Cup. It's like it's like when the, when, when the nerd finally finds out that track's a real sport and he's faster than everybody else. It's like, hey, I can keep up, you know, keep up with me. I am in that same vein of no real logic, rhyme, or reason. Sorry, I'm, or can, I, can I give my pick? I, yeah, I go, for was, oh, yeah, go for it. Go for it. Go for it. Because it, it actually kind of follows both a little bit of both of what you did because I'm going with – I'm still sticking with my guy. I'm going with Major Brooksy. He, uh, you know, he didn't exactly perform 20, 25th, 26th at a PGA Championship is not what you want at, out of or expect out of Brooks Kepka. But to both your points, uh, you know, with Gary – Brooks is the kind of player that we see it. If he if he's on, fuck, get out of his way. You know he mm-hmm. he plays better in the majors. He has more major victories than PGA Tour victories. You know at yeah. one point. <laughs> so that's one side of it. Then the but then like to what TJ said, he's a past champion. He's won this a couple right. times, and yeah. in his mind he has that dumb confidence of give me the first tee. What's the course record? Let's go. I'm I'm gonna pick right. up the ball and I'm, and he's got that kind of mentality. I'm still riding with the, the Brooks train because I want to. I, I like him. I want to see him come back. He's actually probably one of the few golfers I would love to see wrap up his contract and then come home to the PGA Tour. I think he will. I think I, I think him and Zach Johnson both will at some point. I think that that's like it's inevitable for them both to come back. Did you say Zach John or oh Dustin or Johnson? Dustin sorry. Johnson. Sorry. Sorry. I was thinking about yeah, but dude, d- sleep, dark horse, dark horse in me says DJ might hang it up. 100, 125 really? mil, one hundred twenty five mil lifetime exemption to Augusta, a couple of majors under his belt. Um, you know, it, it, married to Gretzky. Good. I mean, married. He's got, he's got, <laughs> got Paulina Gretzky. You know, he's he's kind of already he's already the leader in the clubhouse in many ways. Uh, yeah. But it gets harder the older you get to maintain and get competitive, yeah. and so you never know. I mean. Not everybody's going to be Tiger. Not everybody's going to be Brooksy. Not everybody's going to be Rory. Right. Rory's not even Rory. He's got four majors. People forget that. Like he's not even mm-hmm. the top of the top of the food chain when you when you grade him like that. Um, and so DJ's had a Hall of Fame career. He, maybe he's just going <clears> to <throat> ride off into the sunset with you know Paulina on his back. I mean, yeah, it's not a terrible <laughs> idea. Um, okay, yeah. So I like the Brooksy pick. So if if you, I'll give you. We'll do, we'll do TJ and me, and then you. So give you some time. Let's do it. Maybe, uh, Maybe a backup pick, but this is so this yeah. is a dark horse pick to finish top twenty-five. I am gonna roll with Sam Bennett. Performed really well at the it. Masters a couple of years I love back, it. and I I think he's just a little more experienced Swag. now. Um, I think he's he's got what it takes. I think he might be the top amateur there. I mean, Neil Shipley's back. We were talking about that a little earlier. It'll be exciting to see him now after everything that went down with him in the press at the Masters. Um, mm-hmm. But but my my sleeper pick is gonna be Sam Bennett. I was I was in between them. I was gonna go uh, Sahit Tagala, but I'm actually gonna go with Hideki Matsuyama. So I think Matsuyama is gonna be. I think he's gonna surprise some people. I would. I'm gonna say top 25, but do not be surprised to see him top 10. I'm gonna call it right I like now. it. I like it. Hide- again, Hideki's been there, done that, got the t-shirt mm-hmm. and the jacket. Uh, my my top 25. In, I don't know if you can call it a sleeper, but I guess because he's still coming back is Will Zalatoris. Uh, yeah. yeah, you know, Happy's caddy. People people might forget when he had to step away, he was one shot, two shots away from basically winning the FedEx Cup and riding off into the sunset. Yeah. He has a runner up at a major already, and he's back mm-hmm. and he's playing really well. Cool. Yeah, I mean, that's, I like all those picks. Honestly, the Hubbard pick when he when TJ sent it to me, I was like, oh, I forgot he's in this field. That's gonna be good. I'm excited about that. I don't think. I, I mean, go ahead, sir. Well, I, I was just going to say, I just saw Scott Fawcett is his swing coach. They were decade golf, and I saw he just qualified for the U.S. Senior Open, Scott Fawcett Day, which is pretty cool. Oh, hey, look okay. at so I really like following his whole like strategy of just decade golf. I, a lot of people don't. I remember he did like those videos with the Brian Bros and having them try it, and it was not for them, but that's, what, that's how Will plays, and it, it was cool. I have to, the, to see how Scott does there. 
Love Who that. else? Oh, fun fact. I think he's out there. Let me see here. Can't. Yeah, Matt Kuchar's in the field, and I think Matty Kuchar, yeah, Jesus Brooks, Kepka. Uh, but he's going to be, I think, one of the only players to have played in all four of the – him and Tiger, all four of the Pinehurst – uh, U.S. Opens to date, obviously Pinehurst being an anchor site moving forward. They've got six more yeah. coming their way. Uh, right. I'm stoked. I can't wait. I can't wait to check out the kind of World Golf Hall of Fame, the new golf house they have, uh, and then obviously see see the course. This is one of those times same, similar to when I was at Valhalla for the PGA. I'm there to see the. I'm see. I'm there for for the course, man. I, I want to see right. this layout. Yeah. Uh, I've, I. I would rather watch these guys on TV where I can actually watch them and appreciate them instead of standing eight sure. people deep. So. Uh, it's going to be one hell of a week. I think it's one of the only. This is one of the only sports. Like when we went to Oak Hill for the practice round there. Yeah. Like it was cool to like follow like certain groups or like just to stay at a hole and watch a couple groups come through. But it's like the one sport that like I'll go there for the course and the experience yeah. of it. But I'd rather just sit at home and watch it, or like go to the bar and watch it with your buddies or the clubhouse. Like that's fine. But, it's hot. Yeah. Well, not even that. It's <laughs> just it's it's like. If I really want to watch, you know, like somebody, like in particular, I have to walk the entire course with them. And I try to get, try to see them, like there's thousands of people, it's a pain in the ass. Well, you take it. Not only that, and your shots per minute there, with, you know, like you, you're just not seeing that many shots either. You're missing right. so much of the action that's going on. Are you right. a Danny Rapp guy? Do you, Dan Rappaport? I am. I, I like that. Danny Rapp. I, lo- I, I, like, like, Rapp. I, like, I like that. I like that stat, that, that stat, that metric for, uh, for entertainment value, you know, kind of because he was doing that too with Liv and their shotgun start. You're getting 27 shots in 30 seconds. Um, but the uh, oh shit ran right off the rails because you brought up the shots per minute. Eh, sorry, it'll come back to me. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. These things happen. Oh, you were talking um, about the course being the course being the star. Yeah, that's the that's the argument that I was making on another show the other day, which is. The PGA Tour in and of itself, that's where they got to start thinking more creatively in some of these lower tier tournaments, which is if you're not going to have the top players there, then you have to have a draw. And the draw is not TPC Deer Run or TPC Summerlin. It's Seminole Golf Club or Pine Valley or, yeah. you know, some of these other locations, um, which is also what makes U.S. Open so unique and special because – I mean, these are some of the most challenging courses in the world. And I love to see last feel good moment. This is one of the feel the, the, the best feel good moment for me in the qualifying is seeing the trajectory of Harry Higgs. If you, yeah. if you haven't seen his story Just recently, he fan favorite, you know, the belly guy at the waste management and then poof, his game disappeared. He disappeared. And, uh, and he's gone. He went back to back on the corn Ferry tour, got into the U S open via a playoff on the, on, you know, the final Monday qualifying and so uh, I'm, I think a lot of folks are going to be pulling for Harry Higgs. And he actually should have been my, my dark horse top 25 finish because when you have that kind of confidence rolling, it, oh, for sure. it, yeah. it's just, you know, sure. the, 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 whole, the whole looks bigger for Harry Higgs right now. When it's it's going to be it, interesting to see how he plays now. against, like, these, this different level now, just with a much more challenging field. It, it, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm curious to see how he does. Because yeah, he, he's be right on the verge of being back on, like getting his tour card back. You know, oh, he's well positioned. Yeah. If he wins again on the Corn Ferry Tour, he automatically He'll comes up. If there, you win yeah. three times in a season, you automatically advance. But just even if he weren't to really play great the rest of the season, by, by virtue of his two wins, he's probably going to be in a position to come back, which uh, I think the, the tour needs him. Tyrrell Hatton's in the field. I just noticed that. I've got it up here <laughs> on the other I love Tyrrell Hatton, and I, I'm so happy yeah. he is on. He is one of our Boston Common Golf uh, frogs for the TGL coming up next year. But <laughs> I don't <Nice>. guess. <laughs> um, what do you think Tiger does this week? You think he makes the cut? No. Yeah. Uh, I, I think the course is that much harder, longer, challenging. Uh, I, I, I maintain that Tiger's best shots at doing well are going to be at Augusta or the Open Championship courses where as long – Open Championship, weather pending, Augusta pretty much any year until he can't tee it up anymore. Uh, you, right. can't bet, you can't bet against him. But I, it's going to be a draw, and I think it's great that the USGA handed him this, this invitation. If he makes the cut or, or performs, I think that uh, – I mean, in his mind, he's probably saying, "I want top ten. I want. I want an invitation next year." Uh, really, he's telling himself yeah. he wants to win. But no, it's it, it's sad, but it's kind of true. You know, it's like Joe Montana to the Chiefs. It's like, no, oh, this is great, but I don't know if he's right. got what he had. 
and he doesn't have what he had. No, I mean the guy dominated for freaking two and a half, almost three decades. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's just unfair like, when you think about what he did. Yeah, so I mean, it's 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 almost like you know, even even giants have a breaking point. So it's not like you know, it's it's sad in the sense of like that's all we've known, but it's also you know, sucks. What what you got? My, I, I can't believe it. I'm, Stuart Hegstead's in the field. I totally forgot about this. Stu Hegstead was the U.S. mid-amateur winner last year, uh, which means he got an invite this year. Stu Hegstead is the modern-day Bobby Jones. This guy played college golf at USC and then realized that he couldn't put in the time and effort off the off the course to actually be pro. He was like, I mean, he admits it. He's like, I, 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 would, I, I just didn't have that edge. And so instead, he makes a shit ton of money in finance. You know, he's a finance bro who maintains his amateur golf career. He's won the U.S. Mid-Am three times. Um, he's been on three different Walker Cups. He's just a phenomenal story in a really cool kind of uh, modern day. Like I said, a modern day Bobby Jones where, you know, I maintain my private life as my private life, but I'm the best amateur, one of the best amateur golfers in the world. He's not even up there with like the top five because those are all college players. But when you talk about people who have resumes of these amateur tournaments and like Walker Cups and stuff, Stu Hegstead's always a fun follow for these tournaments. Huh. Good to know. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's going to be an interesting one. So it all starts today. Bud will be there due to the magic of podcasting, walking around the grounds of Pinehurst. I'll probably be wearing this. <laughs> but yeah, thanks as always for joining us, Bud, and we'll uh, we'll see who uh, you, brother. brings it home. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks for watching today's episode. To see more of our content, be sure to follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and subscribe on YouTube. We can be found at Basic Bogies on all platforms. Thanks. We hope to see you on the next one.